Among his ambition for the Nintendo Entertainment System. So once again, I time traveled back. This time, I'm looking at Nobunga's ambition for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oda Nobunga, he was a very sneaky guy, an opportunist. So then we got Nobunga's ambition for the Nintendo Entertainment System. What this game does is it forces you to use your imagination to a great extent. But it's fun building something. It might seem a little intimidating to just jump into this game. So you can get hit with a tsunami, if I remember correctly. I'm going off when I time travel back to play this video game, so just bear with me. You can do assassination. Yeah, assassinate num five, number nine as soon as you get the chance. You're such a wimp. You can kill him easy. Just go right in and assassinate him and take over his land. You have an option of, like, the computer as a governor underneath your thumb. And you can pick what you want them to concentrate on. You might want to train your troops a lot. And when you get into battle, you'll be a little bit better trained. You want to be like those kamikaze ninjas when you get into battle. You're doing all these moves like when he cuts the guy's arm off, comes back, chops the guy's face, spin around underneath, tar take his sword, and you're doing like some judo move on him, and you take his sword out of his own hand and stab it through his face or something. You want to be like Leonidas when he was taking on all these guys all by himself. He just like a big back body drop on somebody. You want to be like Achilles, and you want him to be just like... Going through the entire enemy army all by himself. Your training is complete, and I don't think that you can push it any further. Now, when you put them in the combat, you're not going to be able to see them running up and down, blocking the enemy move, jumping, stabbing the guy in his thigh, then blocking the sword attack. If you don't understand how they came up with the samurai sword, it was because when the Mongolians were invading Japan, their swords kept breaking. So they came up with a sword that can't be broken. They created the finest sword ever made. I believe this was underneath Genghis Khan's son, Kublai Khan. As he tried to invade there. What are you trying to eat up the entire world? You trying to? I mean, are you that hungry? He wants to eat Japan. Let them be. But then we wouldn't have the samurai sword. So you could thank Kublai Khan for that and his attempts to send giant fleets and to take over Japan because he just was so hungry. It's like he got ketchup up and mustard all over your bib. Clean yourself up. So in this game, you don't get to see anybody using a samurai sword in combat. Now you get to see a ninja really sticking it to Fife number nine. So that's the one you're going to assassinate. Which usually doesn't work, but it always works against Fife number nine. Boy, was he in the wrong place at the wrong time. You could pick your leader. So then you get these battles going on. How much does the terrain work? You know, there's mountains, then you have to move around them. You get these different orders and you get to select what you want to do. Basically what ends up happening is you try to surround them. You might surround the enemy unit. Take a little bit of it here, a little bit of there. And then you have to imagine what it looks like in your head. So you get this giant sword fight. They all got these samurai swords and they're going at it. And they're blocking them and whoever is more skilled is going to look cooler during this. They're going to be like underneath taking that samurai sword, blocking the enemy's sword. Cutting his throat, spinning around back, knocking the sword out of his hand, cutting his face off because you trained him to full capacity. You might want to build dams so that if there's a, a tsunami, you don't get wiped out. And other take other preventive measures because every now and then there's a disaster that might occur and it might affect you. There's a way to cheat, sort of. You can up taxes to maximum level. And then, so imagine if this happened in real life. Like, what the hell are you doing? And then you just give them a whole bunch of food to make up for it. And then they're happy. My dad used to affectionately refer to this game as no bungas. So when you're on a first name basis with a video game, I guess that means you play it a lot. You pick your leader. You get these stats. And of course, you're going to keep trying until you have the, the best stats. You might spend an hour trying to get the best statistics just because you're a perfectionist. And you want your guy to be have high charisma, which means he's handsome. So that women like him better. Who wouldn't want that statistic? You want a hundred on that. So basically he's in control of an army that controls a province. It's like a form of monarchy. Where you have this person. And the way that that works is you have an army that protects an area. So they place their allegiance to him. They farm. And he gets a little piece of everything. And he controls everything. Tokugawa's in this game. One time he was hiding in a barrel. And the guy stabbed through it. And stabbed into him. Because they're just checking to see. He was bleeding. And he didn't want the blood on the sword. So he wiped it off. And the guy was pulling the sword out. He wiped it onto his clothes. Now imagine that. 
Imagine this happening to you. You're probably think that very sucks. The fun is if you get into these battles and you actually find yourself accomplishing something unique. If you can, try and surround the enemy and destroy them a piece at a time. Which isn't very easy to do. It's a lot easier probably to do it in real life. But I don't really remember exactly how this all works. I know you got squares. And those squares are supposed to represent your different units within your arm. And you get to build these different units underneath this. You do that when you have your turn, which occurs every season. And sometimes an event happens during your turn. During the battle, you just move these squares around and you get a different order. Move this direction. And the whole time you get this music. I'm not going to imitate the music because then they'll probably claim my video. And who do I mean? Sony. They own everything. You get attacked from every direction. Or you attack them from every direction. You just take out a unit at a time. But based upon your military strength, which I believe has to do with your weapons and your training skill, you might think you're the most badass army ever. I thought we were badass. Like you had an army of Achilles and you're still getting your ass kicked. And you can try to bribe enemy forces, I think, in this one. And then they might come over to your side and all of a sudden you have numerical superiority over your enemy. So there's a lot of different strategies involved in everything. It takes a lot of balance, but it is winnable. My dad used to let me stay home from school to actually clear this video game. What else there is there to say about this game beyond that? It was fun. It basically comes down to your imagination and these squares. It basically comes down to your imagination and all of these words on the screen. But you give them the meaning through your mind. So that's no bunga's ambition for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It has really cool music and... The same song you have to hear over and over, but it's fine. I'm, I'm fine. I came out fine, right? I listened to that song for years. For like a year. Just playing the game, I heard the same song over and over. I turned out fine. There's a different song I heard that a lot too. But the Bunga's Ambition is a pretty fun game. If you like those type of games, you have a lot of imagination. You just like building stuff.